And I'm in the treehouse now, and these peaches are coming along beautifully, as you can see. Now there isn't a massive amount on here. But what there is, should hopefully be very nice peaches. There's enough for the size of this tree. I'm not even going to take the little ones off, they may not make it. Um, but what you'll notice, and what the reason I brought you in here is, these were getting to the top and they were starting to bend over again. And I wanted bushy rather than growing tall. So we've done what we did last year and we've cut the tops off the new growth. And it'll put side shoots out then in bush rather than um, grow tall. West not, want not. So what I did is we stripped the leaves off them and I've now planted them in here. Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine. Now there's nine in here. The other week, I can't remember if I showed you this or not, the other week I took these cuttings off the cherry bush and they've already got established. They're growing. And if you remember, this bed is really, really wet. Even now it looks dry, but it's really, really wet. And this is an ideal propagation bed. Let's see if there's any peaches on this dwarf. Yeah, there is. We've got peaches on here as well, look. Yeah, not a, not a massive amount, but more than last year. There was hundreds on, of course, but they do drop a lot. Uh, and the plant basically thins itself out by having the drop of surplus fruit. These were the very first carrots that we sown. These were the sweet candle. And they're doing really well now. But remember this bed was really, really wet. And we got a setback and that's all germinated out of the sweet candle. And then re with tape. And you can see they're making an appearance now that the bed is drying back. And likewise, with our little gem lettuce that I've never been able to grow, I'll be pricking those out shortly and putting them into pots. But it's been a week since the last video. Let's have a little look in this... Uh, polytunnel and see how things are doing in here now and as you can see these cabbages and cauliflowers are now looking fantastic with the exception of one uh, sorry these are calabrese these are cauliflower they're calabrese that one's not doing anything we'll pull it out and we'll replace it with something else that's of use these are the purple cauliflower that we only planted last week. Now got established and growing well. And the ones we potted up for my brother. They're now ready to go out as well. And these are the four red cabbage. And likewise with these. The cucumber already needs a twist. Around the wire. The peas have got established. These ones that were dying to death are also getting established. This one also needs a little twist around the string. That's that one sorted. We planted these leeks last week and they've now got established. And we'll have a look and see if we've got any uh, radish that we can harvest today yeah they're still growing and still healthy like I said if we get anything out of these it will be a bonus turnips are really coming on in leaps and bounds now they have got some damage but I think that was before we put the polytunnel up um, I'm pretty certain it was in fact little uh, mini coal cabbage looking fantastic um, I can see that these are really starting to green, green up now as well. They're not as nice as I would have expected. And uh, the Primo 2s are coming along. 
these beans have got really established now. These are the dwarf French beans. I'll just put a cane in there and tie them. They should be up and produced before the cabbages are even ready. The kale's doing really well now, and these beans that we put in. The chard is doing really well, and the beans, little beans. These exhibition onion are doing extremely well. And the rhubarb chard at the end as well. So, overall, things appear to be going in the right direction. So I'm uh, pretty happy with how this has all panned out. Another job jobbed. I've cleared this bed down now as well and left a few little red spring onions that's in there. Now then, I planted the elephant garlic cloves that I got off Danny. I think there was three or four. And I planted some off Steve green side up. And I think there was seven. And they have grew, but very poorly. And... I was wondering why and when I went down here it's absolutely sopping wet even though it looks bone dry and again this is just a garlic transplant quite well so I made the executive decision to pull it out and put it where I can control the water and where the beds are drier to finish off growing because I'm not going to be eating it and it's only stock. We've brought it in here, we've cleared a space, I've planted another blueberry in here as well, the one that was dying around the back of the shed. And I've put Danny's elephant garlic in here. There was four. One, two, three, four. Now, in my experience, and this is just my experience, I find that when the, the leaves are yellow like that, yellowing mostly signifies too wet not always it can be too dry and it's a fine art so what I've done is I've planted the I've transplanted these and I've put a dressing of cow manure around them including the blueberry and the strawberries and then I've planted transplanted steves as well because these can just grow for as long as they want in here these are just going to be stock so there's only seven there uh, we got off Steve at green side up and it does transplant quite well it's gone into nice dry dryish beds with a little bit of cow manure around it to feed it so that when they do get a drop of water off me it'll wash the nutrients down there and hopefully get them up as big as we possibly can in the first year now I know that these beds hold water well and they haven't been watered this year other than the rain that we've had earlier on in the year and they're still sopping wet down there We've now got crops in, you know, the spring onions don't like them, but as this dries back, they will get going. I can see they're starting now. So we've do, uh, put in the mixed chicory, which is a leafy crop, which does like damper conditions. We've also put in beetroot, which similarly likes slightly deeper uh, damper conditions. A couple of lettuce that was left over, and a couple more chicory, and some more multi-sown beetroot. Yeah, so I'm just having a general look around the garden now. Absolutely beautiful this weather, it's glorious. As you can see, I'm all clipped out. I better not stop out too long or the seagulls are likely, like, likely to carry me away. <laughs> the seagulls will get me. Beautiful day. Just had a, a nice morning just pottering. It's been really nice and leisurely. I can still take the wood chip up in uh, between these two apples and make another little bed there as well. So I've got the bed over there where I took out the spring onions, the red spring onions. I've got that I can plant into. So maybe I had better get some more seeds started. Huh? Because I am now running out. However, I do want to get the skin on that polytunnel as well. Now I can't get it done this I can't get it done this weekend. Um because Tony's not available. But maybe next weekend, if the weather holds out, we'll get the uh, skin reskinning of that polytunnel done down there. I'm just looking at these apple trees. They're absolutely full, full of apples. I'm not sure whether you'll be able to see this or not on the video, but it's absolutely laden with apples this year. Now I've got some potatoes. These are what was left of the uh, main crop, um, Cara and Picasso. 
and I'm going to put those in that little bed where we cleared out the onions from. We might as well use that space. Another job, jobbed. So there was uh, two, four, six, eight. There was ten Picassos left. There were little wee things like that. And I've basically cleared this bed completely now. I've took the grapevine out that was suffering because, as I've said about all the water that comes down from the back of this duck pond in here. So if potatoes like water, let's see. Um, I'm not even going to water them in because the soil is that wet. I've basically just planted them and firmed them in. Right, I decided I would sacrifice these couple of lettuces that was left and the chickens have had those and the beetroot wasn't doing anything at all. I've harvested the spinach because it was starting to bolt and we've got it in our bag of goodies. Took another second harvest of the garlic chives. They just keep coming back when you harvest them. And I've put nine of the uh, caras in here. And I think I've got about six left, so I'm probably going to just do them in some more buckets because I'm not going to start another bed with those, so I'll just probably put the, all those little tiny ones in a bucket. As always, wherever you are in the world, please stay safe, be practical and keep yourselves out of harm's way. Thanks for all your likes, comments, dislikes, subscriptions, suggestions, donations. It's all very much appreciated and thanks for following along. If it's your first time here, think about hitting the subscribe button. It's solely free and it doesn't cost anything. Stay safe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.